<laughs> Welcome to the nerve centre. So what's going on today? So today we are going to brew a milk stout. It's basically a clone, which means it's, it's an American brewery, somebody, or I think it's American, um, and they do a milk stout, uh, which somebody's basically said, this is what I think the recipe is. And a lot of people said, yeah, it's a really good recipe. So I'm going to give it a go. What's the milk part of it about? Milk. So I'm going to add, it's the first brew I've done with lactose. So it's going to sweeten it up a little bit. <laughs> so we're currently waiting for the water to get up to temperature. Yeah. You can so see on this, Strike temperature, we're looking for 74.5. And then once that's at 74.5, I'll mash And we're at 68.9 at the moment. Yeah, so our mash temperature that we want to sustain is going to be 66. Okay. And take us through um, all the equipment that you're using. So this is the Herms kind of HLT, hot mm -hmm. liquor tank. Herms is heat exchange recirculating mash system. So it's basically got a coil inside it. And a bit later on, once I've got Ooh, the sugary, steamy. once I've got the sugar, sugary work from in there, I'm going to recirculate it through that coil on the inside, which is basically going to okay. indirectly heat that. And how uh, how many liters are you doing today? Uh, Thirty eight liters. Thirty eight so liters. Double batch, nineteen liter recipe. But I don't know what that is in pints, but I'll uh, I'll do the conversion uh, and put it on yeah. the screen. You got to pump down the bottom. Yeah, got the pump at the bottom. We can go through this, are we? Yeah, but the music was playing. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we've got a Blick Blickman Riptide pump, uh, just the one. And I've got a much cheaper pump here, which is going to um, recirculate the water while it's while the the water's pumping through the uh, the Herm system. Okay. You've got to recirculate the water inside. So you've got the idea is I'm going to have the water going through the coil one way. And then I'm going to have the water circulating, circul circling another way. Okay. So you don't get any hot spots in there. Apologies to the t-shirt once again. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's, uh, just, I know we did it earlier, but the music was playing. T t tell us about the uh, this, this keg on the left as well. So this is... This um, is homemade, obviously. Yeah, homemade mash tun. Because you've been nicked out the back of the pub. No. Acquired via legitimate purposes. Um, so obviously I've got a... So you fitted a tap. Yeah. Or ball valve. Yeah. yeah. Fact. Uh, and it's, it's bottom draining, so it drains underneath. You can have a look if you want. Under there, look. Bottom draining. You see through there, so it drains because it's like a natural cone in the bottom. You're not impressed with that, so it's my bathtub. <laughs> Basically, means with, with that, means you're not going to get any kind of wasted liquid at the bottom. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what part of the process do we start using this? Uh, in a minute when we're mashing. Okay. Cool. When I start mashing. Gotcha. Oh, and uh, let's talk about your uh, your ingredients over here. Yeah. So we've got, like I said, it's a it's a, it's a 19 litre recipe, and I've doubled up. So basically, does this come like ready bagged? As in, you it, just if you got malt miller, um, which is one I use, they're quite good, good quality. They'll Sweet bag it all up for you. So if you tell them, you tell them the, the amount of grain you want for each recipe, then you can save your recipes. And every time, if I wanted to order this again, I could just say, give me the left hand milk stout, and they'd send me all the ingredients again. Let's have a look at the one on the right. So that's the. That's the uh, the base malt. So it's three point two kilos of crisp pale ale malt. And this one here is the spe um, speciality malt. So you want to see what we've got? We've got two thirty grams of rolled oats, two hundred thirty grams of crisp flaked barley, mm -hmm. three hundred forty grams of crisp crystal uh, crystal malt, three hundred forty grams of Wyoming Munich malt one, three hundred forty grams of crisp chocolate malt and 450 grams of um, crisp roasted barley. Do they create that uh, recipe themselves or is that something that you, you have to put it's, together? That's something that I've put together based on the recipe that I found online. So you tell them what you, what, what, uh, what you need and they send it to you? Yeah, they bag it all up. It's the same with the hops as well. Right, so we are at 74.5 now. Yep. Now what are you doing now? Oh, cool. Hold on. That's <laughs> smooth. Yeah. Uh, hold on. It's alright, I'll cut that bit out. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, just, that's, that's a lie, by the way, I won't cut that bit out. <laughs> you buffed that head especially today. <laughs> yeah, just for you. Hmm. This is going to leak as well. That's cool. This is the base mold. The crisp pale ale mould. There she goes. Woo 
So the lactose is something you're going to add separately? In a yeah, minute. lactose will go in a bit later on. Lactose is going to go in... Once I transfer to there and I'm boiling it all up, that's when okay. the lactose will go in when I've got 15 minutes left to boil. I'm going to be boiling for an hour. Mm -hmm. So 45 minutes, after 45 minutes of boiling, the lactose will go in. Technically, there's a rugby game on in a minute and we can just leave it to it. Yeah. C can we leave it to it? Uh, yeah, we can kind of leave it to it for about an hour. Oh, good. I have to come in obviously, every now and then and check on it. And uh, what potentially could go wrong? I mean, obviously the pipes will start leaking. <laughs> yeah, um, if you get the stuff like that, pipes can start leaking, things can catch fire. One of the kids can be messing around with it. Yeah. So you got a little inline pump down here. Hopefully nobody will die. eBay special? Yeah, the pump, yeah, 12 pounds on eBay. Fact. Um, yeah. it's, it's okay, it does its job. It won't, it can't handle boiling liquid, whereas the Blickman Riptide can. Okay. That can go up to about sort of 70, 80 degrees, I think. Okay. That's what we need to see. So, in the easiest terms possible, Shoot. What, what happens over the next hour, hour and a half? So, what we're doing, so we've got this, the strike water in here, it's at 74 and a half degrees. Mm -hmm. We've got the, obviously, the dry grain in here. Um, that's obviously going to stay in there, all the grain. So we're going to get the strike water up to 74.5, transfer it into there, and then we're going to recirculate it through. Basically, what we want is a really nice sugary liquid in here. And then once we've got the really nice sugary liquid, after about an hour, we want to transfer it into there. So we've got the sugary liquid, then we boil it, and that's when we add the hops. Okay. And then we're going to boil it for an hour. And then after all the hops have been added, we're going to cool it right down. There's not a huge amount of hops in this because it's a stout. We're going to cool it right down to sort of yeast uh, pitching temperature. We put it in the fermenter, which I'll show you in a minute. Mm -hmm. And then um, basically the yeast, we want the yeast to eat all the sugar. So we want there to be loads of nice sugar in there for the yeast to eat. And the, the yeast will um, convert it into alcohol for us. So, Excellent. There we go. Okay. You were saying? Yeah, so we're transferring the liquid from the hot liquor tank out of the tap into the pump um, under the bottom of the mash tun. So basically, this is slowly filling up with, um, with hot water. Okay. Should be, can't feel anything yet. You cocked it up already? No, hold well on. Steady as she goes. Because you want the you want it to be nice and slow because you want the um the grain to there we go, I can feel it getting warmer now. You want the grain to absorb the, the liquid. Okay. Not just you don't want it to just sort of float on the top. Slow it down a little bit more. Oh. So all the all the water, which was what sorry, how many leads did you say? 38? Uh, 30, yeah, there's more than 38 in there. Okay. Because we need the coil in there to stay submerged so that it heats the, the coil. Okay. And that's all going to transfer? Yeah, you should start to see the water coming through any minute now. Every now and again, you think you see a little, uh, yeah. a little bubble or something. I can see stuff happening. You can see them. You can see bits moving around. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got some water coming on the on the right side there. So water's going to naturally find its place. That smells actually quite good. Oh, it does. I love it. <laughs> but it would. Only you can smell through YouTube as well. Well, that'd be a bit weird. <laughs> with some videos. <laughs> <laughs> so we're away then? Yeah. That does smell good. It's like there's a party in my nostrils. <laughs> and that's a, lot, a big spoon. Go. We've got it coming through now. What you don't want is like chunks of dough balls, which I don't, I've never really had much of a dough balls. With. Dough balls, yeah. When the when the grain kind of gets clumped together with the water, and then you've got to re-dry really bit in the dry sort of floury, powdery bit in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, 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 the smell! Be totally soaked through. Oh, and then you'll see you'll see me recirculating in a minute, and it'll all start to make sense. Okay. <laughs> cool. As you see, all the water is transferred now. We're getting ready for the next part of the process. Which is hose changeover and leakage, by the look of it. Now, what's the, uh, what's the gauge? Oh, ga oh, sorry, the gauge is telling us temperature. Okay. So, if we get that recirculating there again, open the tap, probably help. Off. You can see the liquid in the pipe. Mm. I kind of hope it blows up in your face. <laughs> and up it goes. Nearly there. It wants it's to go. Progress. <laughs> you want it? Do you? The problem. This is the problem with this pump here. It's not self-priming. This one here is self-priming. No. You basically, pull that cord and it'll. Oh, okay. Get the air out. So the air out. Yeah. So recirculating, as in it is, it's about to take everything out. Yeah. What's the... Uh... There we go, it should go now. Get in there. Look. So, straight. I'll have to get another one of those side pumps. <laughs> really? Why, instead of the inline one? Yeah. Well, this is not man enough. Yeah. Oh, there we go, go on. It's going, it's going, hallelujah. Yeah, buddy. Here we go, that's better. Right, so that's recirculating again. Can leave that. And now, open that up, open that up. Let's Now we can actually recirculate the. This is where it gets quite cool. So that's all open. Right, so now, if you film there, you'll see that hopefully, all big well, it'll start to recirculate. Right. Yeah, something's happening. Should start to come through in a minute. Here we go. Just like that? Yeah. You want it fairly gentle. Because you don't want to disturb the grain bed. It's basically the, the grains sort of sitting out there. Bottom. It's acting as its own, as its own sort of natural filter. You can see the awesome colour of it already. Oh yeah. There you go. And it's going to be the, the speciality bolts and there's the chocolate and the, uh, what else was in there? Yeah, there's chocolate bolt. Yeah, roasted barley, which is going to give it like a cool dark colour. And it does this for about an hour? Yeah. That's all right. Okay, so take us through exactly what's happening now. Okay, so we're mashing. We're during the, we're about sort of five minutes into the mash. So we've got the nice, um, all the grain in there. It's all nice and wet. And the grain so is through. predominantly sat on the false bottom that you yeah, said, which is the, right. the little uh, mesh at the bottom. That's right, yeah. You probably saw it earlier on. Okay. Um, so it's like a sheet of metal. Yeah. Sort of dome shaped, like your head. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> it's got, you know, thousands of holes for any pump. Um, thousands of holes in the sheet of metal. Perforations, I So prefer. perforations, there we go. So the grain sits on top of that, and the false bottom basically stops the grain getting dragged down out of the tap and then yep. through the motor. And then what's happening is it's dragging out the liquid. Yeah, so it's dragging out the liquid through there, nice and gently, through the pump. Through the pump. Back up through here, and it goes into the top. Okay. So the liquid will... Where it's basically being heated up. Yeah. So, so it, what was it, 65? Uh, no. It's, it's, it was 74.5, that was okay. the dry water. Now we're, we're mashing, we want to sustain 66. Okay. So it's going through that little coil. Yeah. 
So it's going through that coil uh, clockwise. Yeah, clockwise. Yeah. Um, and then it comes back out through the coil through there. Yeah. Back up into here. Back out into there, and, and as you can see, sprinkling it back on top of the grain bed. It's coming out looking like beer. Yeah, kind of treacle. <laughs> Black gold, Texas tea. <laughs> yeah. The bubbling cruise. <laughs> Okay, so what is this, two hours later? Uh, probably about that. Yeah, so we finished mashing, we've done the mash out as well, which is where you raise it up to 75 degrees. We've done that for, um, we kept it at 75 degrees for 10 minutes. Now we're gonna transfer it from the mash tun. He's changed the... clothes, by the way, in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, it got a bit cold. Um, so we're gonna transfer it from the mash tun into the hot liquor tank slash boil kettle, um, where we're obviously gonna raise the temperature up to boiling point. Uh, it's all a bit, gonna play it by ear to see how it goes. All right, you ready to go? Ready to go. Yeah, it's working. Just need to get a slightly longer pipe here. Nice color. Smells good. Uh, We'll zoom in on the colour in a minute once it's all in there. Yeah. So it's all piping in? Yep, looking good. So You just hear it trickling in there? So the liquid we had in there is draining into there, but then we're also topping up the liquid we've got in there with this water in here. All right. So we're sparging. Sparging? Yeah, so we're basically rinsing the grain for like the last little bit of sugar that we can get out. Try to get as much sugar out of it as we possibly can. Let's turn that down a little bit. And once it's all in there, we boil? Yeah, raise it up to boiling point and keep it there for, it's a 90 minute boil on this one. 90 minutes? Yeah, it's normally, I normally go for an hour, but the recipe says 90, so I'm gonna stick with that. 